Namaskar. I welcome Namaskar. all of you to the well-being series here today. We have Arthur from Canada to share with us his knowledge. I invite you, Arthur, to introduce yourself. Okay, thank you, Navina. Uh, my name is Arthur Russell, and I live in a small town called Lindsay, Ontario, Canada. And I do my best to share what knowledge I know about the law of attraction and consciousness and spirituality. And I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to thank my good friend, Celine Cloutier, for helping introduce us. It was wonderful of her to do that. Um, I worked, if, you, if you'd like to know more, I worked as a paramedic for 36 years, uh, began that career in 1983. And, but I've had a long interest in who we really are or what real, we really are. Um, since my father died, well, I look at it now as his spirit just stopped manifesting, but I now view it very differently than I did at 16. I wanted to believe that he existed in the heaven somewhere, but it, a lot of the pain was because I didn't really know what he really was, and that's because I didn't know what I was. So that's a basic introduction of... of so I was married for 20 years. Um, uh, I've been divorced now since 2006, and that was another suffering. But that can that brings a gift if we look for it. I I think whatever we go through, I think is meant to to teach us something. And I try to look at all those as positive lessons. Look for the look for the diamond <laughs> yeah, within it. <laughs> That's really awesome. Would you like to share a few words about your book? All right. I first of all, the okay, I, I have it here, but I'd like people to know. Um, okay, so here's the book. Can you see that? Okay. And it's called it's called This Taste of Flesh and Bones, which is maybe seems like an odd title, but it came to me. And I describe this in the beginning of the book. There's very little about me to help people find that deeper dimension of themselves. That's the whole goal. The title came in 2011. The title came in 2011. And I jotted it down. I was on my way to a dentist appointment in Toronto. <laughs> and it came and I thought, isn't that an interesting title? And I didn't know what to do with it. But I kept it. And in 2019, June 24th, all of a sudden, life sat this unit down, sat this body mind down, and started to write. And four days later, I had 10,000 words, and I thought, oh, I guess I better keep this. And I put it on a data stick, and I kept it, and I kept adding to it. And basically, for the next, it, the rough draft was done in one month and I spent the next two months rearranging it. And it would get me up at night, it would get me up early. And it that's the way my writing has always been. It's not that I struggle with it. I struggle or I work at the editing, but when it's coming, I'm just writing notes very quickly. And it surprised me that this was this was coming, but I had been studying books such as I Am That had entered my life, and I'm now on my seventh read of it, not because I maybe need to, but because I love it. So it felt like this was knowledge all being pulled together. I had written uh, an ebook called Hold That Thought, but I, and I was very sincere about wanting to help people that their thoughts matter. And I know I've seen on your site or where it's about affirmations. Well, I'm a long time believer in affirmations. I always tell myself a positive thing. Like for instance, I would begin my day with, I am now vibrant, perfect health, 
youthful and fit through and through from head to toe. And I feel it. I feel it as much as possible. And I, I've been a long time believer in that. And I really do believe that what is impressed into the mind will be expressed as our apparent reality. Yeah, so the, the book, so I finished, I finished the editing. And then in June, no, 2020, it, I believe it was June. So a year later that I contacted, all of a sudden I was reaching out to this publisher in the United States, Lisa Hagen Literary. And she said she liked my writing, but she said, do you have any kind of following or whatever? Well, I followed my instincts and that's where we're at. So I'm hoping, I honestly hope that anybody who buys it, I hope they get more out of it than they paid for it. That's primary with the law of attraction. Everyone must benefit that if you go into any interaction with the idea of taking it's the seeds of destruction. It must be because I honor the greatness that is you, that is the same greatness that is in me. And I must bring, if I do it for selfish reasons, that's a step down. That's egoic. This is not driven by ego. This is driven by spirit. It feels wonderful. That's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, may I ask the reason behind the title of the book? It's just because, because it came and I liked it. And what I really feel is it almost points to, a, I'm not saying we reincarnate because I know that implies that there's, that this is real. Um, this taste, I kind of got it a feeling that it was, I, I mentioned it in the beginning pages of the book that, that flesh and bones was only the taste, but it wasn't the whole meal. I believe that our real, we don't have an identity. I know we can't point to us and say, where are we? We're awareness. So it's like in the Bible, and I'm not an authority on that either, but where it says somewhere in the Bible, it says you won't be able to point "Lo, there it is, or here I am, or we're everywhere. We're omnipresent. So, but this taste of flesh and bones, I think it meant like this go around as Arthur Russell, that this taste. And I think everybody, I think part of the reason too, I know that this has come to me is even though I worked as a paramedic, I, or I saw so much suffering and I remember how much our own family. I have two sisters. My mother body passed uh, two years ago, and that's fine. She's in. She's fine. She's good. Um, but we suffered at the time of my father's loss, and and so I know that this is about hoping. The main purpose for the book is to ease suffering, so that people don't identify as the body mind so that they know they're not only the body mind some would say we're not the body we're not the mind but rupert spira who i really i don't know him personally but i love his teachings and he would say i he prefers i believe to say i am not only the body mind so that that there's this spiritual dimension that most people don't realize and so the title, it was just that I thought it was going to be a poem at first, probably the title. And then it didn't really come until 2019 and the book started to write itself through me. So we'll hope it will help people if, if they decide to look into it. I... Well, surely it will help people. And where is the book available? Where can we buy it from? It's, it's on Amazon. There's a lot of people who are suffering. So they're driven by, I wrote an article once called um, Circumstantial Evidence. And it was saying that most people are driven by the polar environment of Earth. So if things are good, they're happy. And if things are not, 
then they go down and it's this terrible swinging. So I like, I'm hoping this will help people center in whatever happens, I am fine. I am that I am, I'm untouchable. The deepest part of me is untouchable, is safe. And to trust our creator. That's awesome. And thank you for the copy of the book, which is on the way on the mail to me. <laughs> I hope I hope it arrives soon. It, it... Thank you. Would you like You're to welcome. share uh, something about your blog and also Biscatalyst 360, where you're a constant contributor? You know, I um, so the blog started in 2016, and I had never written a blog before. But all of a sudden, I knew it, it felt like time to start. So it was on Word. It is on WordPress. And initially, it was all geared towards law of attraction articles. But along the way, I wrote, I was active at it for about a year and three quarters. And one day, it was just like the way the title came of the book. I knew it was time to stop. And I was publishing a lot of articles about, I've read, this isn't bragging, it just, in, in a way you could look at it as a downside, it took me over a hundred, reading over a hundred books on the law of attraction to finally understand it. I was trying to apply it all from the body mind. And I didn't realize how reality really, so I just thought positive thoughts lead you to people lead you to events and think of it positively and it will go better. Now that's better than thinking negatively. Thinking negatively takes us nowhere good. I'm not a golfer, but I truly believe you don't sink the putt by thinking you're going to miss it. <laughs> like if, for instance, you know, people here will say um, no problem with something they'll you could be ordering at a drive through here or something a, a tea or a coffee or an order and people will say no problem and i realize what does the mind hear with that it hears problem 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 so i usually say it's all good then my mind hears it's all good and it seeks out circumstances and situations that are labeled good so, so I did that for a year and three quarters, and then I realized it was time to take a break. So, because I like to do things where my heart is really in these things. And it was never getting a lot of views, and it's still maybe not getting as many. As, it doesn't get thousands or anything. I wish it did, because I think it's, first of all, it's free. So that's nice for people. And... I really do the best to bring the best knowledge from the books I've read. Like, I'll give you a little example. So here's a book, The Master Key System. And this, I believe, was one of the books that Rhonda Byrne, you know, with the secret that went so phenomenal, had so much phenomenal success. Either that or The Science of Success by Wallace Waddles. I used to take this book to the gym. I've read this book probably 20 times. This is my friend's copy right now. Mine's more. And I've given these out for free. I would, And people would just be thinking, oh, positive thinking is it really? It's not just positive thinking. It's having a vision. And it's. I didn't know until a few years ago how important visualizing as though we have our result already. I thought I was the doer. Now with this knowledge, I know this is not the doer. It looks like it is. So for instance, here, I on page 90, this is information that I share on the blog. It is the few who know that the things which they see are only effects and understand the causes by which these effects were brought into existence. So... I share information like that. Then when the COVID, the C story, I don't even like the, <laughs> then when the current world story started in March of 2020, I was inspired to put a few positive articles out on the blog. And then that turned into more and more about spirituality. 
and wanting to share knowledge like um, quotes from Andrew Carnegie about how we create. And he was one of the wealthiest men in the world. Not, not that I think money, there's nothing wrong with money. Joining the dots of the knowledge from the Bible, of hidden teachings of Jesus, they, they say, about how he was saying, because he was saying, the greatness that I do, even you can do. That all of us had this spark of the divine in us. And that I totally, totally believe. That's I honor the greatness within you. Oh. So the blog, yeah, it's thinktwice.me. Um, think, and then it's the number two, W-I-C-E dot me. So I wanted people to think twice before they engaged in a thought. I want, I hope there'll be the awareness that chooses why would I think that? Think twice about it. Don't, don't entertain, entertain only positive thoughts that will lead you somewhere positive. That's, that's really awesome, uh, Arthur. I wanted to ask you, do, what advice do you have for the people out there regarding well-being? What, what would you like to share with them? Well, one of the things that really works for me and it's it's I honestly believe it because I used to be a very driven body mind I thought that the way to find success was working hard whether it's about a career or your health be very driven I kept when I was married I kept an exercise log and I would write down whether I'd done 20 minutes or 30 minutes every other day I was very driven now I'm more um I, I meditate every day. So you're talking about, well, what if for health, did you say? To overall help, well-being. help overall well-being, one of my primary ones is meditate. I meditate every day. Am I an expert? No, I don't even, I don't, I do my best not to judge them in any way. For me, it's about when I go within, and that's every day, a minimum of 20 minutes, but I do somewhere there two hours, hour and a half. I vary it. I vary it to, but I view it as communing with my higher self. And that's where I get rid of the definitions of art. So, so let's say for any goal, Neville Goddard was another, he was a mystic, an American mystic, I think that taught in primarily, he was originally from the Barbados, but he taught in the U.S., traveled the US and he taught widely about the law of attraction. In a book called The Power of Awareness, I think it's chapter 22, he says something like 21 or 22. People ask me, he, he wrote, what do I do after the, after I assume the assumption of the wish fulfilled? That was some of his books like, Feeling is the secret, the power of awareness, faith is your fortune, books like that. And he said, what do you do after feeling, feeling the assumption fulfilled? Nothing. That's how he wrote it. He said nothing. He said, it's going to feel like there's something to do. It's, you're going you're gonna to be trying to figure out the way, but it's feel it, envision it. Put all of your senses that you can into it. Sight, sound, taste. If you want to try, if you want health. And I've used this in my life. And I'll, okay, I'll give you an example of health. This is kind of personal, but I'll share it because I want to open up. And it's not, it's not a big deal, but I had IBS. Well, I, Art, Art, his body mind had irritable bowel syndrome for years. And I thought it was the stress of working as a paramedic. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't, but it, and, but when I went through my divorce, it flared, it kind of bothered again. And so what I did, I came up with an affirmation and I, I wrote it as my digestion functions with natural ease and calm. And I kept saying that in an affirmation, you probably know this too, or maybe you have a different approach, which is fine. I always try to invoke I am into it. I am now healthy, 
or like I said, my personal one every day, I am, I am now vibrant, perfect health, youthful and fit through and through. Um, so, and then you feel it, even if your circumstantial evidence points to other. So how this worked in a real way for me, in 2011, I had something that, I had thrush actually, and I went looking online, I was thinking, I'm going to have to make dietary changes, but where did that lead me? It led me to my fillings in my mouth. They were mercury, amalgam. And I was reading this. So that piece of information came into my life regarding my own health. And I, I didn't know that because when they would put them in here, you weren't told what they were. They're 50% mercury, mercury. And I thought, no, that can't be. And anyway, so I looked into it over the course of the weekend. It was a Friday. And on the Monday, I was making phone calls. I believe that when we're given the way, step into that and, and do your best. So I made phone calls to holistic dentists. I thought, what's a holistic dentist? I thought, anyway, well, they're ones that will only use healthful products in your teeth repair, that kind of thing. I phoned one in Toronto and I was in Wednesday and I that day I had two of 14 fillings. I had 14 teeth that were loaded with mercury. Long story short, IBS gone. Gone. Perfect health. And it also alleviated, I used to get occasional down days of not clinical depression, but just feeling down. And it would pass in a day. But it, what bothered me about that was it happened for seemingly no reason. I couldn't connect it to, oh, well, you know, like something terrible in your life has happened. This got rid of that, got rid of it. I'm very, so there's a story of I was believing positively, and then it took me quite some time to find the, the answer. But now I have, I mean, I had 26 years of enduring that. And I used to think, oh, is it because I'm too stressed? In fact, that's why I got into meditation. I thought, maybe I'm too anxious for these calls that I go to as a paramedic. Maybe I, because it wasn't really a passion. I did a good job, but it was never a passion. Like writing, writing is my passion. It's my purpose. And I, it's, it's about giving. It's about giving. And so it, it took me some time to find the answer. But then when it came, and here's a primary thing of the law of attraction. If it gives you an idea for an article, if you're an author and you want to write a book, write it down. If it gives you, and especially if life comes knocking two or three times, like let's say you hinted at something and said, Arthur, did you hear about this book to read? And I before maybe I would have been unconscious and kind of let that just pass away. Not anymore. If, if somebody mentions a book and then maybe two days later, somebody else says the same book, I feel that that's life giving me clues. And so I do my best to follow those clues. And so for people with the law of attraction, I would hope that one thing that I would really not stress, but believe. You don't have to know how. What I learned is it's wherever the mercury goes, because every time you chew or have a hot liquid, this is what I read. And this is what I do. I have no scientific methods to test it myself, but I believe it made sense to me. I thought, first of all, just having mercury in your fillings, I thought that to me didn't make sense on any level. And now, I, so I learned that um, certain countries have banned them all together, or I looked in Canada, it was a thing of you're not to put, they put them below the gum line, but a lot of them are. So it's maybe absorbing, uh, mercury. And so I was brave enough to say, I'm going to step forward and do that. And my health got better and better and, and my energy level too. So that was a wonderful thing. And, and what it was, was I was believing, even though I didn't know the way. I think that's a key part 
of the law of attraction and do not focus on it. I remember one author by the name of Bob Doyle, who's written books on the law of attraction. He said, if you're thinking, how can I do this? Gee, what should I do? Oh, I, and this is the way I used to be with my writing. I'd write fiction and I would, I would send it out. I'd send out three submission packages and if i got one rejection then i'd send out another two i was working it but i i probably didn't believe deep down this is now this is a thing believe it see it like neville goddard said and imagine a short scene in your visualize every day i visualize um but do it very lightly like don't work it just so I would say for people who are wanting to learn about the law of attraction and imagine a scene that would imply, it's so like, say somebody wanted a job, a really good job that was fulfilling, maybe paid them enough and they loved going to it or opening their own business. If it was opening their own business, picture people lined up outside the door and they're coming in and they're going, thank you for helping me find this product or thank you for with my well-being that like what you do and picture that scene and picture it over and over and picture shaking hands when we're able to do that again so i hope that's soon because shaking hands with people welcoming them in and oh and your business picture it the way you desire it and that you have it now not that you will have it that you have it now that's awesome. Thank you so much for all of your advice and for joining us. And You're welcome. For your wonderful presence here on the overall well-being series. We wish you that you should spread your knowledge to everyone out there through your book, through your blogs, and through your writings to the whole world. Thank you once again, Arthur, for joining us. Thank you, Navina, so much.